there are certain ways that I like to work with the mixer brush. And you'll see one of those approaches when we get to my painting workflow starting in the next chapter. But I wanted to quickly show you a few of uh, the many options you have available to you in terms of the uh, techniques we can use to apply the mixer brush. I want to start here with a fairly quick and easy look at painting from scratch with this tool uh, using a photograph only as a reference. There will be situations where you might want to add elements to your photo paintings using this kind of skill. With the photo paintings I make, I almost always add things that weren't in the uh, original. And you may find that painting from scratch in Photoshop is actually easier than you thought. There's certainly a lot more room for error than with traditional painting. And you'll have a lot more tools at your disposal for fine-tuning and making corrections. You might want to start with simple objects on simple backgrounds. Maybe a piece of fruit or a flower like we have here. Simple paintings like this are a great way to study form and color. And a better understanding of these things will help you no matter what your painting subject and no matter what technique you use. So let me quickly take you through this kind of uh, painting workflow. You're probably going to want to start with a couple of blank layers on top of a solid background color. And then on the top layer you want to create a sketch. Just roughly trying to uh, match the shapes and the layout from the reference photo that you're using. Maybe using a 9 pixel opaque painter. And you want to choose a, a neutral color that will stand out from the background and from uh, the colors that you'll be adding. And if you find sketching to be uh, too much of a challenge in the beginning, you can always put a blank layer over your photograph and then just trace around the edges. And remember, you can always take your sketch into Liquify to uh, refine it. Once your sketch is done, you can begin the process of blocking in the colors that you see in your reference photo. And for this, we would use our opaque painters. And we're just talking about the general colors in the beginning. No highlights and shadows no subtle variations. Then we can begin to add some of the secondary colors, the different shades, some of the highlights and shadow colors. And with these colors in place, we can turn off the visibility of our sketch and continue adding colors and refining the shapes and the forms using the uh, opaque painters. And at this point, we'd want to evaluate the background color uh, in terms of how well it works with the colors of our subject. Once we're satisfied that it will work, we can begin using our uh, blending brushes to blend together all the different colors. And for a subject that's on a separate layer from the background, we'd want to make sure uh, that our brushes are sampling all layers, uh, especially as we work around the edges. We might want to turn down the flow of our blenders as we work the smooth tonal gradations. Now we can begin to add to the highlights and shadows as we continue to refine the forms and the colors. And we can begin to add a little more detail and then refine that detail. This painting was carefully made by matching the colors of the reference photo by using my color picker and just eyeballing the result. Until you've learned to do that, you can always use your eyedropper to actually sample the colors from the original. Photoshop gives us some tools for making the process of painting from scratch easier, like the eyedropper tool and the ability to trace your original sketch from uh, the reference photo. And especially as you begin to uh, learn this craft, you might want to take advantage of these shortcuts. But I would strongly urge you to create your own sketches and select your own colors, because I really believe you'll benefit from the process of trying to see the shapes and colors and then reproduce them on your canvas. Like I said, this will benefit you creatively no matter how you paint. Now let's talk about a couple different techniques for transforming photos into paintings using the mixer brush. One of the many ways to do this would be with a cloning layer, and I'll show you briefly how that would work. To create a cloning layer, you'd want to bring the opacity of your image layer down to 1%. And since our image here is on a single background layer, of course our opacity is going to be locked in at 100%. So we'll start by double clicking on this background layer and turning it into an unlocked layer. And now that we have the ability to adjust this opacity, we'll bring it down to 1%. 
And even though we're not seeing any uh, image information, or more exactly only 1% of the uh, image information, all the color information is still present in this layer, even though at the moment it's not very usable. But we can uh, combine this layer with another blank layer at full opacity. We can merge with Command or Control E. And we still have what appears to be a completely empty layer. But when we paint on it using a clean blending brush, uh, we can see that it contains all the color information from the original image. So how could we use this? Well, to begin with, we could place a solid background layer below this layer. And we could place a copy of the image at uh, reduced opacity above our cloning layer uh, to use as a reference image. So we know where to apply our brushes and in what direction to stroke. Uh, and let me show you how we might uh, set up this uh, layer configuration starting with our single layer original image. First, we'll copy our background layer. Now we'll fill our background layer with the background white using the keyboard shortcut Command Delete or Control Backspace on a PC. To uh, create a reference layer now, we'll copy our background copy layer. We can relabel this reference if we want, just to uh, avoid any confusion. And we can bring down the opacity of this layer. I usually prefer 25 to 33 percent, but a lower contrast image might require more opacity. And now we can configure our cloning layer. We'll bring the opacity down to uh, 1 percent, like I showed you. We'll add a blank layer above it, and uh, then use Command or Control E to uh, merge these two layers together. And if you'd like, you can relabel this uh, paint or cloning or whatever else you might prefer. And this will be our working layer. Now we can just take our clean uh, blending brushes and begin the process of painting in the colors of the image. And these colors, as we just saw, are coming directly from our apparently transparent cloning layer. Our mixer brush is just sort of drawing them out. You'll want to paint following the contour lines of your subject. And if you can't make out those lines, you can always increase the opacity of your reference layer. I won't show you this whole painting. I really just want to give you an idea of what this technique might uh, offer. I'll paint some of this yellow down here at the base of the flower. Now some of this shadow color. And you can see when I turn off the reference layer how the colors are beginning to look uh, painted onto the empty white of our background. I'll paint in some of this yellow green of the stem. Again following the contours. Working both sides of the lines. So hopefully with this uh, little bit of painting that we've done here, you can see the basics of how this cloning layer technique would work and the potential for this kind of approach. And you could use smaller brushes for a more realistic look or larger brushes to produce a more impressionistic look. So with this technique, uh, the colors and the general shapes are provided by your original photograph and uh, the brush strokes and the painting style would be supplied by you. Now one of the nice things about painting photos in this way is that we have an action uh, that was given to us as part of the default uh, actions library. It's down here at the bottom and it's called Mixer Brush Cloning Paint Setup. This particular action has been included only since CS6 so you won't see it in CS5. Uh, but if you look in your presets folder inside uh, the resources folder included with this lesson uh, you will find it there. And if you're in CS5, you can just load it by uh, opening the Actions menu and clicking Load Actions and then uh, navigating to that folder. So let me show you how this action works. We'll go back to our original image. If we select this action and press the Play button, uh, we'll first get this little warning telling us that uh, the layers of our image will be flattened. Uh, that uh, we'll need to use cloner brushes to paint on cloning layers. And a cloning brush is basically our clean blending brush configuration. And then it tells us to uh, disable sample all layers for the brushes we use, uh, which, as I showed you, uh, it is with the clean blenders and uh, all the other brushes that we'll be using. 
So we'll hit continue and Photoshop will complete all the steps. And for those of you who may not be familiar with actions, let me just give you a brief explanation of what this is. If you have a certain series of steps that you go through repeatedly in the same way, uh, in the same order, uh, for example, setting up cloning layers, uh, we can program Photoshop to run through those steps in rapid succession. Uh, so actions are both a time saver uh, and a way to record tedious processes uh, so that we can use them again and again with uh, a greater level of ease. Looking at this particular action, we can see all the various steps that Photoshop took uh, after we hit the play button. I think in this case there are close to 50 different steps and uh, you saw how it took just a few seconds to run through these. So let's go back to our Layers panel now to see how this action has set things up for us. And let's expand this panel so we can see all the layers. What we have are three different layer groups uh, sandwiched between our 50% uh, opacity reference layer and our white background layer. And each of these groups has a cloning layer made in exactly the same way I just showed you a few minutes ago by reducing the opacity of an image layer at to 1% uh, and uh, merging it with a blank layer at full opacity. And then along with each uh, cloning layer, you're provided with a hue saturation adjustment layer. Let me zoom in to show you how this would work. We'd want to paint using our bigger brushes on this underpainting layer, uh, not worrying about details at all, just sort of quickly blocking in the main areas of color. And then on this uh, intermediate strokes layer, uh, using a somewhat smaller brush, we would begin to concern ourselves with maybe some of the intermediate level detail. And then on this detail strokes layer, we would want to use an even smaller brush to uh, begin to paint in some of the finer details that we might uh, see in the photograph, uh, some of the lines and uh, contours. And you can see uh, when you view these layers separately, uh, each one of these contributes a different level of detail to the painting. And then with these uh, hue saturation adjustment layers, you have the ability to selectively fine tune the uh, hue, saturation, and lightness of each of these layers. So in a nutshell, that's what cloning layers are all about. I do plan on presenting tutorials that will go into a lot more detail on this process of using cloning layers and also the process of painting starting with a blank canvas. But I just wanted to give you a brief introduction to these two different uh, approaches. And I would welcome you to experiment with these using some of your own photos.